Your wife was driving around the city with an unauthorized vial of SARS, Mr. Hopkins. Times being what they are, we have to wonder why. She's dead. Does it make any difference now? If she had friends, it does. Oh, because those people never work alone. Her father passed away last August. We went to Riyadh for the funeral. She spent some time with her brothers. Was there anything different about her when you returned to the States? Yeah, of course she was different. Her father had just died. And her mother had passed away six months earlier. You know, you'd have liked her mother. She was British. Look, Mr. Hopkins, if you know anything about this, you need to tell us now. All right, let me check her palm pilot. You know, because I think she's got Osei's home phone number. Hey, stop it! We have an outbreak of SARS. St. Mark's Hospital. You know what, Mr. Hopkins? Maybe we will check your wife's palm pilot. Right now, there are only 12 sick people. But that could be just the tip of the iceberg, right? So what happens now? The health department has directed all symptomatic patients be isolated here while we try to locate patient zero. And what if it's not one of the 12? Patient zero goes to the market, coughs on the produce. Then he heads on the number one train downtown to the office. I get the point. CDC is conducting an epidemiological investigation. Until that's completed, we won't know how potent this particular strand of the virus is. Is coughing the only way it can be spread? Typically, the virus is transmitted through the respiratory system, but the CDC recently banned blood donors who travel to SARS-infected regions. We're going to need a list of all the isolated patients. The lab report on Anna Hopkins came back from the ME. Her blood tested negative for the virus, so she wasn't a carrier. As far as we can tell, none of the SARS patients is connected to Hopkins or to anyone Hopkins even knew. Now, that's hardly a shock. If this is bioterrorism, there's probably no obvious connection. Well, hold on. Anna Hopkins isn't on any FBI or Homeland Security list. Oh, I'm going to sleep easy now. Detective Briscoe, friend of Anna Hopkins on line two, says it's important. Thanks. Detective Briscoe. She knew it was wrong, but she didn't know what to do. Driving around with SARS? He made her do it, that bastard. What bastard are we talking about? Dr. Ego, that's who, her boss. Blanchard? He told us they had special couriers for that. Look, I'm just telling you what Anna told me. Did she tell you why she took the chance? Because he told her to, that's why. I said he was crossing the line by making her pick up his lunch, but this, I mean, she could have really gotten sick. What was she supposed to do with it? Get rid of it. Where? I don't know. Did those people get sick from the stuff in Anna's car? We're not sure yet. It could have all just been a coincidence. Yeah. All right, we're on our way. Well, maybe patient zero can shed some light. Thank you. I would have bet my degree that the origin of this particular outbreak wasn't Canada. Why is that? Short course, there are two strains of SARS virus. The Singapore type, which caused all the problems for our friends up north, and... Let me guess, the other one is from China. I see you're current with the medical journals. No, we have a friend who imported a whole batch for antiviral research. Patient zero, doctor? Patient zero. A journalist named Janine Wilson, who recently returned from a medical symposium in Toronto. By the time she presented with respiratory symptoms, she transmitted the virus to everyone you see here, including her four-year-old son, Tanner, who isn't progressing as well as we'd like. Poor kid, he's got rheumatoid arthritis as it is. Can we talk to her? Follow me. Are there any new cases reported? None in the last 48 hours. Fortunately, it looks like we caught this in time. Well, still, shouldn't we be wearing masks or something? Breathe easy, detective. That's what isolation units are for. I write for science today. If I didn't know Charles Blanchard, I wouldn't have a job. What is this about? Anna Hopkins? I haven't seen her in almost a year. I couldn't have infected her. She was killed in a carjacking. Oh, my God. Charles had something to do with it? No, no, but the thing is, Mrs. Hopkins had a vial of the coronavirus in the back of her car. That bastard. What in the world was he thinking? What are you referring to? He put my baby at risk, millions of innocent people? Why don't we start at the beginning, Miss Wilson? Charles and I had a thing. 
It was good, except he has a wife. I should have known he'd never leave her. And you told him to pack his things? Four years too late. The B-12 shot. That had to be it. Blanchard gave you a B-12 injection? Every week while we were seeing each other, I have chronic fatigue. The last shot was right after I came back from Toronto. He came over to beg. I can't believe I felt guilty about infecting my child in the name of my so-called career, and all along it was that son of a bitch. Do we come in, ma'am? See, Doc, some people still make house calls. What's this about, Charles? Sir, so you're going to have to come with us. What are you doing? Just call a lawyer, Elaine. Charles Blanchard, you're under arrest for the attempted murder of Janine Wilson. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you do say, Janet will be... 